Okay, so we're back today, and I have a little assignment to give you guys. Um, we have, we're going to go into IPython 3. Now, if you don't have IPython, um, you can just use the regular interpreter, so you can just go into Python 3. But this one's a little bit more powerful. Uh, curious though, I'm wondering if there is IPython for Windows. I'm not really sure. Is, it, is there an IPython for Windows? Yeah, maybe there is. Maybe you might be able to install it for Windows. Okay. Um, anyways, what I wanted to do today is I wanted to start with uh, iterating over strings. So, for example, if I created a word and I made that word something like uh, hello, and now if I iterate over this word, because up to this point we've been really been dealing with iterating over numbers, so using range to make a loop. So now, if I say something like four letter in word, so I can say I can say that, and I and then I would go print letter. This gives me hello. Okay. There, what I need you to understand is that the word in is expecting an iterable after it. And word is a iterable because it's a string. So it prints out each letter H-E-L-L-O. Now there is another way in which to iterate over strings, and that is using the len function. So what is the len function? So let me show you what len does. Len gets the length of an iterable. So notice here the word hello has five letters. And so the len of the word is five, and it returns that. So I could say something like, remember, we're in the interpreter here, right? So if I wanted to store that, I'd have to say something equals len word. But I could write another uh, another loop that goes like this. I could say 4x in range len word and now I have to close both brackets and finish off my right? So, so just think about now what's going to be what len word is going to return. Len word is going to return 5. So now it's like saying range 5. What is range 5 going to return? It's going to return, it's an iterable, right? But it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, what does that stand for? Let me show you. So let's go to our Blackboard and let's open up uh, our Blackboard here. And when you have a string like the word hello each letter in the string has an what's called an index an index is an integer and that integer represents where the letter is and we can access the letters so for example when we start counting in an iterable, we always have to start, obviously, from zero. And so you can see that the, le the numbers under the letters are the index, are the indices of the string. So for example, the H, so if this was word, that means word zero and that's how you describe 
which one you want is with these square brackets, okay? That would give us the H. So let's try it. So before I do this, uh, I could j let's just finish this one off and let's go print. And now I wouldn't say X. If I say X here, look what happens. If I just say print X, then I just get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm, I'm basically only, I'm, I'm basically only um, dealing with these here. These are the X's, okay? So these are my X values. Okay. However, I don't want the, the X values. I want the letters. So I can't really print X. I'm going to print word bracket, square bracket in this case, X. Now when I do it, uh oh, sorry, I forgot my closing bracket for print. There. Now it prints out hello, just like it did before. So, um, let me just do it individually. If I go word zero, as I said, that's going to give me the H. Okay? If I go word one, what do you think it's going to give me? The, yep, you guessed it, the E. Okay? So, why am I teaching you this? Because I need you guys to understand how to iterate in two different ways. It's very important that you know how to do this in two different ways. Here is the first way that we did. Okay, there it is. For letter in word. This one seems simpler. Okay, here is the second way in which we did it. For x in range len word, print word x. These two things do the exact same thing. Yes, this one's simpler. However, however, this one is a little bit more flexible. Why? Okay, I'll tell you why. It's because when we're printing out the letter, we can actually print out what came before it and what came after it because we can do math with the X. You see the X goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? But let me ask you this. Here in this situation, when we print each letter, do we know what comes before or after it? Now obviously, there's nothing that comes before the H. So that's not really going to work, is it? We can try and see. Um, and, uh, but nonetheless, nonetheless, um, so for example, let's say, watch this. If I say x equals 2, there you go. And now if I said, what is word 2? What do you think that's going to give me? Do you guys want, is it, does it help to see this? You see where the 2 is? Okay, so that gives me an L. But now what I can say is, I can say, I can replace the 2 with an X and it's going to give me the same thing, right? But now I can do some math. I can say, what is word minus 1? That gives me the letter before x. See that flexibility? OK, what about the letter after x? Aha. OK, well, that one was actually the same letter because, so maybe that's not such a great example because this hello has two l's in it back to back. But um, you know, if we changed x to equal, um, Oh, I guess that's not such a great word. We're always going to hit the L's. Um, in any case, I think you understand the concept here because this one, this second one here, is more flexible, but it is more typing. But I want you to understand what len the word is doing. It's returning an integer, which then range accepts. 
And remember, we're only providing one argument to range. So it's like saying, it's, it's just like saying uh, range five. Range five gives that. And if you change that into a list, you can actually see what the whole thing is because it, regular range in Python 3 uh, returns a iterable that yields values. So what that means is it doesn't return the whole 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 all at once. It just returns one number at a time. Okay, and, that, and like we said earlier in the course, that's really useful when you have humongous ranges you're dealing with. It's not going to it's not going to create a million numbers. It's just going to return one number at a time. Um, so having said this, I want you guys to write a little program. Okay. Um, I want you to. Have the user type in a sentence. Okay, so you type in something like um, sen equals input enter sentence. Okay, and then you would type in something like hi, my name is uh, something. Okay, and then what it does is the program should calculate how many vowels are in the sentence. So it should return, it should say there are six vowels or however many. So in this case, let's count them. I is a vowel, that's one. M is not, Y is not, N is not, A is, that's two, E is, that's three, I is, that's four. So what are the vowels? A, E, I, O, U. Not Y, by the way. So, so you have to figure out how many vowels are in the sentence and then simply say there are blank number of vowels in that sentence. Okay, so pause the video now, give it a shot, and we'll go over the solution uh, after you have tried it. Good luck. Okay, so let's go over the solution now. Hope you had a chance to do the uh, vowel counting. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first grab a sentence from the user. And now I'm going to iterate over each letter in that sentence. And I'm going to do it two different ways. For now, um, I'll say for letter in sentence. Okay. Now I'm going to say if letter equals A or now remember as soon as you go or you can't do this that's wrong okay that might sound right in English but it's wrong you have to go like this or if letter equals E or if letter equals A E I or if letter equals uh, Got to have two equals, right, to do a comparison. E, I, O, or if letter equals U. So that's it there. If letter equals A, or letter equals E, or letter equals I, or letter equals O, or letter equals U. Great. Now if that's if if any of those are true, then. Um, Right, okay, so now we have to do call this uh, vow count, and we'll have to set that equal to zero to be the number of vowels. Um, maybe I made a mistake when I uh, deleted that from a, 
another person before. So now we're going to go vow count is equal to vow count plus one. And then we can just say at the end, after the loop is finished, we can say print an F string. There are vowel count vowels in the in, or I should probably let's just say in sen. We'll make it look nice by going like that. Let's hope that works. Okay. Should. All right. So let's run this. Enter sentence. Hi, my name is. There are four vowels in hi, my name is. I, A, E, I. All right. OK, so that works. Um, however, I want to show you a different way of doing this. OK. I want to show you where we can use the keyword in instead of going or, 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 or. What if you had a lot? What if you had more than five vowels, right? Um, I mean, okay, there aren't more five more than five vowels. But what if you were searching for things and there was lots of them? So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to um, comment that line out, and then I'm going to say if letter in. And now I'm going to make a string because a string is iterable. Remember, in requires a iterable after it. And I'll go A E I O U. Look how much simpler that looks. Now, do you understand the power of the keyword in? So now, when I run this, if I at F5, enter sentence. Hi, my name is, and it says there are four vowels in hi, my name is. Perfect. Excellent. Okay? So that's an easier way of doing it. Now, that's not to say that the line above is, was wrong. It was correct. It just was a lot of typing, and it's, it's more succinct and more Pythonic to do it like we did in line seven. However, we're going to change this yet again. And I want to emphasize that I'm expecting you guys to understand how to write loops, how to write for loops in two different ways. So this time, instead of saying uh, for letter in sentence, I'm going to say for x in range. And now I'm going to go len sen. And now x is going to be a index. And so I'm going to comment that out. And I'll say if sen x in a e i o u. So that's essentially the same thing as saying if, if letter in. Okay, I want you guys to understand you have to be to know how to do loops in two different ways. Okay, so now let me run this again. And hi, my name is. There are four vowels in the sentence. So it works. So it's important that you guys understand both ways of doing this, okay? So I'm expecting you guys to be able to do this in two different ways. Now, what's going to be your next assignment? Well, your next assignment is going to be, now I'm, go I'm not going to give you the solution here, but I want you to think about this. 
enter a sentence, so just like this, so that's, that's your first line. But instead of telling me how many vowels are in the sentence, I want you to calculate how many words are in the sentence. Okay? So before you, before you start coding, you have to have an algorithm, an idea of how you're going to determine how many words are in the sentence. Okay? So think of a, I will give you a, a hint here, try and think of a little trick. When you're looking at a sentence and you go through it letter by letter, so in other words, if, you know, um, if this, let's just kind of look from the perspective of a computer. Oops. Let's say we had, hi, my name is. So how does a computer look at this? Well, the computer looks at it letter by letter. So first it'll look at the H. So basically don't look at anything else other than this H. Then it looks at the I. Then it looks at a space. Then it looks at the M. Then it looks at the Y. Then it looks at a space. Then it looks at the N and so on. See if, if you can imagine blocking the rest of the sentence so that you cannot see the whole sentence at once but only see one letter at a time. Could you come up with an idea or a trick to try and figure out how many words are in the sentence? If you can do it, write the code and see if you can complete the assignment. Okay, I'm gonna stop the, pause the video now, uh, give it a shot. Okay, uh, we're back. So, I hope you figured out that the trick was to count the number of spaces. That's right. So, if we look here, right, um, we've got how many spaces in this one space here, one space here, and one space here. So, that means in the word, in the sentence, hi, my name is, one space, two space, three space. How many words? One, two, three, four. So you simply add one to the number of spaces. Okay? So if we were to code this then, uh, let's call this, um, how about, count words. Okay, so we've got count words here. Let's take a look at the solution because I've already got it. Uh-oh. No, no, no. I don't want to save here. I want to open. Uh, thank goodness for error checking. Okay. Count words. There we go. So we would go input sentence. right and we want to do this in two different ways right so we could say word were is number of words right we could say input uh, enter sentence and then for letter in sentence if letter equals now that's the way you would represent a space there right by typing quote space quote word equals word plus one and then finally print word plus one right because we, we we have one more word than spaces then here uh we're doing this with range now and if sen i because i'm using i instead of x is equal to a space word equals word plus one and now here's the cool part if I start with one, I don't need to put word plus one here. I'll just go were. Okay? So there's the solution to, um, there's the two solutions. 
I, I hope you understand how that's working. However, this is a fragile solution. What I mean by fragile solution is that it's not really robust in the sense that it'll break easily if, for example, watch this. Ready? Let me, let me run it, OK? And if I type something like, hi, my name is uh, Ark or something like that. OK, so they both say that's five words. Great. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. OK, so it works. But what if I did this? What if I say, hi, space, 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 my name, space, 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 is. Now it says that's 11 words. Obviously, it can't deal with multiple spaces between words. That's why I say it's fragile. It's not a robust solution. Can you modify this code? that we have, can you modify it such that it will work when you put multiple spaces in between words? And I'm going to give you a big hint now. Ready? I've already alluded to this during this class. The, the, ra the, the for loop that uses range is more flexible than the simple way of just saying for letter in sentence. That's your hint. In other words, this for loop is more flexible. It can do more. Pause the video now. Good luck trying to modify this solution to also work for multiple spaces between words. Pause the video. OK, so we're back. Now, this solution was more difficult. Let's see if, if you didn't get this one, don't feel bad. Um, it, was, it was a bit challenging. But let's take a look at it. The first thing I wanted to sh bef show you before we go into the solution here is dot strip. Okay, so this is a uh, function or a method on strings that removes leading and trailing space. So before we go in, let me show you how dot strip works. Ready? Let's say you enter a sent sentence, right? And you you say you type something like space. Hi, my name space, lots of spaces, enter. So what's sent? There it is. You see where the quotes are? Now if I did send.strip, now the spaces before and after the last non-space character end up getting stripped away. Okay. Now this doesn't take away the spaces in the middle. So for example, if I did this again and I went space, 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 hi, space, 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 my, space, space, name, space, 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 enter. What's sen? There it is. See where the quotes are? But notice there's spaces in between. So now if I did send.strip, now I'm not set, I'm not setting it equal to anything, right? So I could go send equals here, send dot strip, and now send would be high, but the spaces in the middle don't get stripped away. Okay? So that's what dot strip does. And it works on strings. Okay? So now that you understand what that does, that's very handy, by the way. Uh, let us go back to the code. And now you understand what line three is doing. Okay, we haven't really said anything about here, so we could say um, enter sentence here, there, and now 
I've done it two ways again. The first method that I've done it here on line 5 to 11 is I create this concept called the last letter and I iterate again using for letter in sentence and I say if letter equals a space and the last letter is not equal to a space that's only true at the end of a word. Now let's go back to this and let's see here. Okay, So let's go back to our blackboard and let's uh, Let's like discard this stuff and let's start again. Um, so if I went hi, my name is. Okay. So um, Okay, let's move this down a little bit so we can see this as well. There we go. If letter equals space, so when would that be true? Here. That's true right there because that's a space. That's a space and that's a space. Okay? And the last letter is not equal to a space. Well, what was the last letter? Here, that's the last letter. And here is the current letter. Okay, so if la if letter equals space, yep, that's true. And last letter is equal to an I, which is not equal to a space, right? Not equal to. That's true as well. So that means when we get to when we get to this location, we'll add one to were. The question now is, uh, what was last letter? Last letter is equal to letter here. So now we've stored letter. So in other words, when we got to I, then obviously the H was the, the last letter, right? And that's, I is not a space. So the first part of the if is not gonna be true. It's only gonna be true here. But I want you to understand that the last letter is stored as the current letter. So when we go back up and letter changes, last letter was the letter before it. Because we're continually looping here, right? So if I, if, like for example, um, if I open this program up in Thony, where's Thony? Okay, and I, um, I I just wanted to sh kind of show you. Well, even if I don't do it in Thony, let's say I do it in, uh, let's say I do it in Python Tutor. Okay, so let's take this and let's go Control C, and then I, because Python Tutor and Thony uh, are very similar, right? So if I go to PythonTutor.com and I click on start visualizing your code now and I paste it in here and then I visualize execution next okay now we gotta enter something enter a sentence hi space space my space space name space space is submit Okay, there is, there is your, um, so now sen is this thing here, okay, next, last letter is space, next, letter is h, last letter is now h, letter is now i. Is letter equal to a space? No. So since this is an AND, we're going to skip it. Last letter is now I. Next. Letter is now space. Is letter equal to space? Yes. Is the last letter not equal to a space? Yes. Therefore, true. 
Therefore, were equals were plus 1. Now it becomes 2. Do you see how that works? So let's try one more. Now, last letter is space. Now, is letter equal to space? Yes. Is last letter not equal to a space? No! Last letter is equal to a space. So therefore, the second part of the if is false. Therefore, it's true and false. And because it's an and, the whole thing becomes false. Therefore, we're not going to add 1 to were. You'll notice were will stay at 2. Next, we skip over it. Now, last letter becomes space. Go to the next letter. Now, letter is M. Well, if letter is M, that's false. Letter is not a space, so it skips it because it's an and, right? If the first one's false, the whole thing is false. Now, last letter is M. Letter is Y. Letter is, last letter is Y. Now we go to the, right? Now, letter is space. Now, what's the last letter? The last letter is a Y. It's not a space. Therefore, it's true. And when we go in, you're going to see when I click this word, the 2 is going to turn to a 3. Click, and it's a 3. See how cool that is? So that in this method, we don't care how many spaces are between the words. We, we're using this concept that this if statement is only going to be true at the end of a word. Now, this isn't the only way you can do this solution, but it is one way to do it. And the alternate solution is the same thing, okay? But instead of saving the last letter, I'm not saving the last letter. I can access the last letter directly by subtracting one from I. So <clears throat> I can do both algorithms, right? But in this one, I need an extra line to save the last letter. Whereas in this one, down here, I actually don't need an extra line to save the last letter. I can access it directly by subtracting one from the index. Because if you think about it, right? If I go to here, these things are all indexed, right? So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If I'm at 5, if I want to know the last letter, I just have to go 5 minus 1, that's 4, and so there is my last letter. So it's nice to see the solution in both uh, styles of for loops. And so now that you've seen this solution, I want to go back to IPython, and I'd like to remind you guys how to iterate numbers going backwards. So for example, if I wanted to print the numbers from 1 to 10, because I have an assignment I'm going to give you which you're going to need this, and I just wanted to review this with you really quickly. If I said for x in range 10, and if I go print x, I think all of you know what the output is going to be. Predict the output, and here it is. 0 to 9. Good job. Now the question I have to ask you is, can you print out this, this same thing going backwards? In other words, can you go from 9 to 1? Or sorry. Let's go 9 to 0. Can you go from 9 to 0? And we've done this before in this course, but I am going to help you remember. If you can remember now, I'll give you a second. Try and, try and uh, type out the for loop that's going to go 9 to 0. In other words, going backwards. 4x in range. Now, what goes in the brackets? We're going to start where? 
at 9. And we're going to go to 0. But we, we don't really want to stop before 0. We want to get to 0. So what's 1 past 0 going backwards? You remember how to do this? Negative 1. And what's the step? Negative 1. How many of you guys remembered that? Excellent. So now we'll say print x. And you'll notice now it'll go 9, 8, 7, 6, all the way down to 1. Oh, sorry, 0. Perfect. That's what we want. Now I'm going to remind you guys about string concatenation. So if I have two strings, so for example, if I have the word uh, cat plus uh, y, that gives me catty. Okay? If I have the string uh, my plus cat, that gives me my cat. Or it doesn't have to be two letters. I could say simply mcat. M plus cat will give me mcat. So you can you can use the plus. In with numbers, plus is arithmetic, right? Arithmetic addition. But with strings, plus is called concatenation. It glues two strings together, creates a new string. Alright? So here is your assignment. Your assignment is to have the user type in a word, enter a word. So word equals input. And when they type in the word, hello, or any word that they type in, the program should tell them if the word is a palindrome. Now, question, what's a palindrome? A palindrome is a word that is the same word spelt backwards. In other words, hello would be O-L-L-E-H, okay? Ole. Ole is not the same word as palindrome, okay? What is? Well, how about the word race car? Is that the same spelt backwards? Let's try it. R A C E C A R. Oh my god. Race car is the same word spelt backwards. How about another one? How about the uh, the name, the person's name Hannah? Is that the same spelt forwards and backwards? H A N N A H. Yes it is. So those two words are called palindromes, okay? And these are examples of palindromes. So what I want your program to do, and you can do this for, for homework today, is write a program that asks the user to type in a word and then determines if the word they typed is a palindrome or not. OK? So give it a shot. See you next time.